everybody for coming here. I have been working in the creative industry for money for a long time, and nobody has an easy at 8.30. <laughs> I mean, if you ask the creative people for something, ask them after 11 o'clock, 11.30, 12 with a glass of wine, it's much better. So I'm really amazed, and thank you for coming so early. And I hope, it's, I mean, I, I wish and I hope my talk today will be as light as good as those donuts, but, <laughs> but I think mine is a little bit tough. Who doesn't like it? Really, the door is open, go, because it's quite tough in, in the way that reality seen from my point of view for the projects that I have done. And it is as well tricky because how, do, how can you really talk about reality when reality is all made by us, seen by us, it's a corner of our life, even if you have a relationship, two people together see the same relationship from two different corners. So even that reality is completely different from the say because being a couple is a view of a perspective of something. Even that reality is so different. So, and the other thing important is being an artist and talking about reality is quite absurd because we're well known of not seeing the reality or seeing it that, that reality just as an artist's point of view. And my talk here today will be just about that. How can a reality be seen from an artist's point of view? And for that, I'm taking and comparing with Picasso. <laughs> so who am I to do that? But I'm taking this game of complaining and comparing and discussing with you that maybe it is worth it because that is an artist's point of view. So, reality for me is an artist. So, a simple proposition. What and how can an art piece be about reality? Normally, reality takes, or the artwork takes things from life, takes them into pieces, dismantles them, but I'm not neither mechanical person, neither an engineer. I'm sorry for my English. I do use terminologies that come through the Italian or French or Latin base. So I hope if I don't make myself clear, please stop me. <laughs> so, and it is all about, we try in a certain way through an artwork to talk about the truth. And reality and truth are quite very near, but they are so different because of the point of view because of the reality that somebody who sees that and interpret that, cementing that, putting them together again, back, as a new essence. And especially the contemporary art today or the conceptual art today dismantles this, all these pieces, all our lives, all this reality into something new. And maybe there is some percentage of truth in that new art piece that is created. So the greater the truth, the greater an artwork, I'm bringing that here. I don't believe 100% on that because otherwise why is so great the creativity behind it? Because it sends you to another view, to another reality and takes you off from the boredom that you have maybe every day. So when Picasso created this, I presume he was in the south of France going to pick up a, a great glass, a bottle of wine. And the shade that was in the south of France, of course, riding off on a bike, dismantled it and brought into a new piece that I think it is the essence of a bull. But who had ever thought? I mean, has everything of a new reality, has everything about a reality that he saw, but in my opinion, has the essence of a bull, the strengthness of iron and everything. So... We all maybe say that is not a bull, but in reality, for his reality, how he dismantled it, something completely different and brought to an essence. So, well, almost a bull. <laughs> so, and uh, Stone was talking about, about this virtual reality that we, through the new technology, have today. Everything, of course, goes more and more into that. And we are often uh, in the fight with ourselves because we believe the virtuality but in the meantime that virtuality is taken from reality of our things so before i go on in discussing 
everything about reality, I'd like to explain a little bit who I am and who and what have I done. And a little bit a tiny about Albania. So yes, I live in Toronto, I live in Milan, but originally I was born in Albania and I lived there since I was 20, 20 years old. And that has signed all my way of being. And it is and was a reality that really was strange. So you will find beauty and aesthetics in my work, but in the meantime, all was sound, uh, signed by this childhood that I had. Albania used to be a dictatorship, one of the worst, uh, worse than the North Korea, till in the 86, or well, let's say 92. The last dictatorship statue was thrown on the ground by a mass of people in February 92. So it has had a very terrible past, but in the meantime, Things survive, stories survive, a country maybe goes on. And so we know what is the old and we don't know what the new is. But that, in order to, to really understand the topics that I brought here today, as I said, they are not light as the dance. Albania, Women, Justice and the Law. I did a huge project in Albania uh, about uh, not only prison and prisoners, but a specific thing. Albina didn't have any shelters for uh, women prisons till in the 90s. It was a country that had political prisoners, but did not have really uh, shelters for women, and no woman was actually in prison. Women, if their husbands for political reasons were put into prison, their wives were sent to gulags with the children to walk the land and never meet anybody else. So all of a sudden, in the 90s, after the war in Kosovo happened, and a lot of troubles happened, of course, in the borders with us, Albania was the only place for the UN troops and the blue troops to pass. So a lot of gun, as guns, as you might know, in corrupted countries started spreading around. So the, the problematics that we're in a family, or the violence that went in the family, these women couldn't stand it anymore. So in a certain way, because of the abuse and violence that has been going on on them, and after it was on the children, they killed their husbands, and they ended up in prison. So the whole idea was, I've been following the numbers, statistics for many years, and I said, how can this happen? A country that didn't have any women prisons, uh, not only prisoners, but after to build shelters, and these shelters were growing. So I decided with, uh, Jeffrey Adams, that is here today, he's a psychologist, to go and really understand, but not because art can do much in matters like this, but it's important to bring something out, to bring not only a voice, but as well to talk about reality that or something hidden that is there that people don't want to know. Because I think this didn't happen in Albania, it happens in Latin America and in every country. And it is about abuse and violence, but it is about a family matter. And that, because it's a family matter, is none of the business of the state. I'm sorry, it is completely the opposite. So that was the main idea when we went there. It was done, uh, divided in different things and different periods. But the first period of that was we should not really consider people or the prisoners. They were, of course, they consider themselves that they are not guilty. Neither did we go there with the idea they were guilty or not guilty. But we all know, and through psychology, and especially being an artist, that you can lie very much with words. Maybe even I am lying now. But through signs, for people who do not know how to draw, you can't lie. And that is the truth. And that will be a reality. So this is we decided not to let them talk, not to let, tell them anything, except talk through drawings about the reason where they were imprisoned and the reason they uh, maybe thought their past, their future, everything. Everything was through drawings. We asked them what was, it will be started from a very humble way, this presentation, and slowly, slowly will go up and up. So we asked them in the beginning, how do they feel? And this was their drawings in chains and hearts completely broken. That is how they thought. So they couldn't lie through this was not possible to lie because you don't have any possibilities to lie. And we asked them, draw a portrait of yourself 
And if you can see here, there are a few, these are their drawings, a few uh, tears. And after we ask them, if you are an animal, can you represent yourself? So as you can see a bunny or a chicken with the little birds, or we ask them as well to present themselves. They were lions, but in reality, they were in prison. We ask them to the reason they were there and to draw the reason they were there. So you see, it's the face of the male or the husband that they was there. And I think it doesn't need much interpretation. It's all there and no much to add. I'm sorry for the drawings here, but the guys here with a gun and with a knife that went into their houses. Here you have a law that somebody that enters in your poverty legally should not happen. In Europe, this happens and the guy who comes into your house has more freedom and by law should not be judged instead of you that are in your own house and attacked. And we ask them, what did they think as well of, this is another interpretation of, if can you see or say or tell that through a sign or a symbol or an animal that represents the reason you are here, so it was a snake. As well, we asked them what do they think of the justice system. You can see a key and as well another snake. That they actually did the justice system through black and white charcoals. And uh, if you really see the drawings, are very humble drawings, but it really the justice system is just black and white, no color, and they have chosen it. And the expression actually done it says the law is the same for everybody but the law works better if you have more money and if you see the guy here which is the lawyer the judge has an, a huge envelope bigger than him which really explains the corruption and as well here these are cash money so they were there but was it right for them to be there? I don't have a degree in law and I don't pretend to do that. But I think, and I had the voice to bring something out for people who thought, if you kill somebody, you end up in prison. So our idea was after, at the end of the whole project, to bring a new reality and to bring the truth that was behind these conditions at the end, at the last moment they ended up in prison. So they really, after the last week, they finally told their stories, wrote their stories, and finally we hanged them in an exhibition for people to read. Part of the project was as well to bring different uh, uh, MPs in the exhibition, the ministers, the judges, because of the corrupt system to start talking about it. And it was quite a huge event during the, the open uh, discussion. Should these women be in prison for, for this? Because they have been to the police station for many, many years. And they all went sent back by the police saying, this is a family matter, so, sort it out. But when they ended up in prison and the children didn't have a father anymore, the mother ended up there. Of course, the children is our problem because they are completely alone because tomorrow they will be thieves to survive. So when you have a state that doesn't really care. So it is a reality that is our problem. And this was brought out. So it was quite a strong project. And at the end, the feedback was very strong. We left because we needed to go on on other projects, but many intellectuals really uh, took part of it, proceeded and went on. So with the new government after these women were free, a part of it. So it was the first time for me to see that sometimes you need to put the seeds for good things and to see the reality from a different point of view. It doesn't mean that it is the real truth, but it is important to really present that reality that people don't even want to hear because it is a part of it. I hope I'm not bothering any of you because there are heavy topics in the morning. So you can see still a few things, and that's at the base in here. You see that is a work of mine done when I was full of emotion around this project. In fact, I presented them, I presented. 12 bars in that represented their 12 portraits. They were bigger than a group of women, but I, I, I took the essence of it to represent the truth and to represent the reality. This here is the re final representation and the project I did for the Thessaloniki Biennale, 
left and here in the corner you will see a little bit of a story of the background of the project and this project was done after I finished the prison project months later I represented them in this way and these are 12 portraits of this woman of the whole project that was done in prison and about prison so you see here is one part the first you saw before the small little uh, bars were these ones and these are in steel after when I was in Toronto I got really six months off of the project finally I cooled down of all the emotions and everything and to talk about this reality, you need as well time to reflect on reality. And the second one, I thought this women to kill somebody really need to be the toughest person to do something and you do this for your children. So I thought that the bars and the iron to represent these portraits were not right and was not the proper one. So I thought the watercolor is the most smooth uh, color that goes everywhere, is not predictable. So I tried to have the same or about to fill them after in a watercolor and it's this one or this one because that you can't control so is the time so is life and when I heard in June that there were some of them were free after I did this one that you see here which is sewing and in color which is really finally the last part of it so I'm going back again for you to have a perception of that so this is the whole project and it's called Defiant Portraits So the second project and the second topic is, is there any possibility to know the truth? And I, on this, I'll bring a, a different project, but still connected to political situation. And as well, the values, beliefs, how things do change through time. And, uh, but the essence never changes. And that is the point. I'm talking now about a facing memory, which is still a way to see a reality, look history as well, look back and propose a new project that can, it is so, still today have so many values and very contemporary, but it's based on something that is history, art world and everything connected to that. Corruption, uh, I'll start talking about it. So I, it's called the face in memory and I uh, the whole idea was I've been following since many years that the uh, auction houses are really selling a lot of artworks and especially with the novel or new money that comes through different things now it's very easy that the art is an asset it is to be bought because you know that will make a lot of money in the future through now you pay taxes through houses you pay taxes through many other things but not yet through the art world or the artworks that you collect. In the history, because I came from where I came through a dictatorship, I really started thinking how art has helped many dictators. Not only they were great killers, but as well great collectors. So in history, I really did a huge research who has been a great dictator, but as well a great collector. It's, these are the two lines that are the basis of this project. And there are many. But to be a dictator, you need really to be for your own country, considered by the population of the same country, as well to be considered a dictator for people abroad. And as well, it's very tricky because only time shows that you have been that, because somebody has been considered quite right, and through the time we discovered that it was not like that. So it's still about the realities, about history, how it was written, and history mostly is written by winners. So these two topics are the project that I have taken that are connected together into this piece. So I took 12 dictators that not only were great dictators, but they had great collections of artworks. Uh, you'll see a little bit of that. And I took them and I did them in etching. Before doing them in etching, which is one of the oldest media that really exists, and it goes like this. The etching goes like this on a piece of paper. It doesn't go like this, like the drawing. So if you do an etching and it goes like this on the paper, it's very difficult to erase or either really take it off. 
So the reason why I went on that, first because it's the oldest is media about something that goes on paper like this, but is as well connected into the history as something that is built to resist and not to be, to, to fade or to go away. So I took 12 of them and people could recognize their faces because not only a few, many of you will know who is a dictator, who is not, but through the background of your families or where they come from, you maybe will remember Ceausescu, you maybe will remember Hitler, and just choosing these 12 portraits that people had a connection to that image or very easy recognizable. So here you see that they were etched first and after I erased them. The act of erasing is quite a very strange one. How can you erase something that you really are creating? And that is part of the, the deconstruction or political act. Can art fight back into something that really you are not using again? You are using only an eraser. It is a fact and a deconstruction act and a piece, but as well exists in the history of the art of erasing. It has been always by the winners in every war when there was an occupation. Normally it destroyed the past, so have done the Romans, so have done the Greeks, so is ISIS doing today, to have a new part and start from zero because you are the winner. But so is in the art world. There is an important piece of Ramschenberg and the Kuning that exists at the San Francisco Museum. He took a great drawing of uh, the Kuning and he erased it. This only piece exists in San Francisco, but that was a deconstruction. My piece brings that too, but it is a really political act into something. And why this project talks about reality? Because time, how we see that reality of those days. Many of these collectors that collected art really said they were great men and they had great taste. But if we knew what Hitler really loved, he loved Berkeley and he loved one piece as many others, but one in particular, the Isle of Death of Berkeley. We could really have known the faith of him. So our manias or our pointing out, I love that, can be as well a weak point if we really know. And in this case, I erase them. I have left here a little bit of their pieces because even if you erase an artwork, you can never totally erase it. And you can never, this is a fact, <laughs> erase really completely, totally history. So this is what I've left of them, but this is the artist's proof at the beginning. And there is as well a video connected to this piece. This was shown at the Tel Aviv Museum in Israel. The video and the uh, artwork are shown in the same space, but not on the same wall, because it's as well a little game for me, as well to let people know if you remember one of the faces, which you can see only through the video, you can go and check who is exactly in the piece. So I will go a little bit of the video for you to It is important the sound in this piece.
We'll go at the end of this project, and who wants to learn more, there is only me one, so I'll go a little bit further till to the end because it is important that. Last one is the Albanian dictator in the hotel.
but there are so many now in Africa that this project will be a project that will be going on. I, I hope it won't be a project that will be going on. That's strange enough. Everywhere it's popping up a bit here. We don't know yet if Putin will be one of them. So, um, or Erdogan in Turkey. What you all end up is like this. So the other uh, project is conquer mentality and landscape legacy, which is the reality fear, public fear. I'm talking really about heavy topics and in creepy morning you know they come from like things. I'm sorry for that but this is what my background has been and this is a different reality. So and I've tried to bring something important through that past that is once in a while it comes up in a different way of thinking. So I was invited at the Kyrgyzale by David Elliott for uh, to bring a new project, and it was the first time that was done at Biennale in Kiev. And the whole idea of this project was that I wanted to bring uh, a new project that was based on war architecture. Albania was known for many things, but as well, one important thing was the bunkers. And we had so many in the whole country that you can't get rid of them even today. It was the first finest concrete and seal when the people couldn't have much to eat. So you'll see today what the reality is, how they are used today, and even turned out in vases or for the plants. This is, these are watercolors that I've done based on the reality that is today. And they were everywhere from the mountains to rivers to uh, places where we lived and we were foul. I mean, it's really a symbol of fear because they never were used for any fight. They were mostly used to scare us. They were never used for any protection. We never were occupied by anyone. So it really has remained so deeply in the brain of all of us that these bunkers are everywhere. But that's why the young generation considers them part of this reality of the landscape of the country. But it was about a paranoia that never really was anything else and more than that. Being a country of a Mediterranean country is very hot. So this is the project that I propose in Kiev. As you can see, there are very little dumps and they have a good smell as well. As a, a, I produced a new grey pantone that has a proper special smell because these really in reality were used for toilets. Public toilets by the people when they were for protection and fighting, which we are never used. So you could immediately, if you smell that from outside, you could really know that after that corner was a bunker because of the smell. So the work here has a good smell against the mosquitoes. It's quite a powerful, and everybody who came to see the exhibition, they thought that was lovely domes with a good smell. They didn't know that, so I played with that, just the opposite of it. And a good generation, because it was intimate spaces, a good of young children came out of there, so only one piece is immune because of the relationship that got into these spaces. And these are proposed exactly how they were. And this is the last project, is the project that I'm doing here at the Zygo is uh, called The Consequences of Love and the Reality About Love. Most of taken, uh, let's talk a problematic reality. It is all taken through the blues and the music and all the lyrics that do come through that. So, but the main idea was chains and the consequences of love, all represented into the blues and the music. So, I took the title of the exhibition, Take Nobody Business, if I do, that is right now, it's Igor and goes till the 24th uh, of uh, May. You have here a little tiny view, but this is one part that is called The Consequences of Love that came through the project. 
after the project I did at the women prison because I really understood that the reason why they were there was not because of the men, because of love. This is what they went to to that point because they believed in love. So I started doing the project of the consequences of love. And this is a part of it. The blue is of the blues and it has written the lyrics uh, part of the work. So it is all about change. And if for you who want to come and see the exhibition, this is much lighter than the two projects I took before. It is all about love and how it is really presented and based all on music and especially the Afro-American music that has brought in this country such a wonderful part of it. And it's really amazing. This is based on lightness and heaviness. It's a title called He Ain't Heavy, He Is My Brother. I changed it and because it's about the way it is, he ain't heavy, he's my lover. All the words that you see, they look very heavy, but in reality they are all fake chains, plastic chains, painted in gold and in silver and black. But really that is a real joke. And they are called, they are discovered that the North Americans have the measure of ounces. We have grams. So the whole idea was 200, two grams of love when it's translated in ounces is very, very light. So only that, even the same object has two different measures because of two different cultures. And that is a chain made of flesh and it is, I wanted to really remind of the chain when they are under rain and water and weather, but in reality, it looks like flesh. So the whole idea of reality is your own point of view and it is just your corner. If you meet somebody else who can open for this or to you a different point of view of reality, it can be completely different. So it is all up to us. Does really reality exist? This has been and will be my question. So thank you for coming here today. I'm sorry. <laughs> We don't have a lot of time for questions. I don't want to keep you guys too long. Who has the best question? <laughs> Somebody has the best one. We're going to find it really, really quick. Or if, if there's maybe a couple, we're, we're going to be, you know, we've got like maybe five minutes or so. Somebody, if anybody has any questions. Or we can just grab coffee and, and then uh, hang out for a little bit and come up and say hi. Is that better? We have a question. I'll let you guys take it away. Yeah. It's like five minutes. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to be quick with my not good English. English is correct. What has been the feedback from governments and other dictatorships or political systems to the artwork? I know that uh, my artwork's point questions shows a reality, makes people think what really life, reality, things are not the way they look. If you really dig deeper, it is so wonderful. And to have the freedom to talk and to have the freedom of point of view to express that. And I think the biggest freedom is that the freedom of thinking and expressing yourself. It is, uh, as I said in my last exhibition, take nobody business if I do. And this is what I give as an answer. <laughs> because I think I'm not able to do anything and I have the freedom not knowing anything so well. That curiosity sets me everywhere. What the governments or the political think about it, I hope they can be less corrupted and have more ethic today, whoever they are, in whatever country they are. Because we discovered them what they do after 10 years in some countries like America. In other countries like Albania, you never catch them. More you're still richer and stronger and better you are. So I think it's as well a duty or an ethic to bring things to a point to let people think their own way. Yes. Um, first of all, I should say that the best thing for me, I have been really thinking, what can I do after I did that project? I'm quietly, I, I felt quite, uh, I had no power. And I, you know, you need to help and you want to help. So my whole point has been from that day till today, 
to really find a way, economic way, to give them maybe some work inside that they can have a little profit and when they behave well, they can get 10 days out or five days out and they're economically able to maintain themselves and go and see their children. So I think this would be the best thing that I can do, which till now I found different ways, but the corruption inside of making profit is so good and so big. So I really don't know, I don't want to make more damage if I don't find the right way. But part of our project was as well, let, let these women think that they were so much institutionalized when they were there. So our questions, especially the last was, what will be, what will you be doing once you get out of prison the first day? What will be the second day, the third day? You know, people who are in prison never think what they will do when they will get out of prison. And actually, our preparation psychologically preparing them was quite good because we, they didn't believe it. Neither did we, but at the end, a few of them got free. So it was very interesting to really make them think what they will do. Not only the first day hugging somebody, but a longer view of if they get out, what will be their future. Because it scares you more than being in prison for 20 years. So that has been my thinking and trying to do. I haven't done much because I'm looking at things pro and contra. And, but I want that when that will be done, I'm a very practical person and I didn't came from dreams or a wonderful background. So I think the best thing to do is help them. This is, this is my attitude and I'm trying. Thank you for coming yeah. out today. <laughs>